Do you guys, do you guys think there could be a town in the universe where the National Enquirer is the Daily? You think so? You know, Chip, the three-headed paper boy, delivers it in the morning. And Alan, a freshman at Central, stands on the front porch and catches it in his antlers, just like this. Hey, hey, all right. Thanks, Chipper. Chip, Chip. Because he has three heads. Come with me. Come with me. So he goes in the kitchen. He takes the paper out of his antlers, and he starts to read it. And his mom comes downstairs and reads over his shoulder. And, of course, she is exhausted from breastfeeding the alien quince. And she says, say, honey, isn't that an artist's rendering of our next-door neighbor, Mrs. Carlson? Yes, Mom. What's she been up to? Nothing. Just giving birth to the Prince of Darkness out of her armpit. <laughs> well, that doesn't seem so newsworthy, honey. Yes, I know it isn't newsworthy. Nothing ever happens here. I hate it here. I hate it. <laughs> honey, something wrong? Yeah, I like somebody. Oh. Is it the new dog girl? So, you know, I hope I haven't shattered your illusions of me so far. You know, I mean, I hope you can still imagine me running through an open field in a flowing gown, carrying a box of Summer's Eve. <laughs> now, you know something? Of all things, I don't even watch TV, and that Summer's Eve commercial had to make its subliminal impact on me. This is, I think I've become really oblivious since I've lived here. I've lived here two and a half years, and I think I'm oblivious now. This is, a, this is kind of a disgusting story. I was in a coffee shop two days ago. <laughs> You're surprised at that coming from me? What, a disgusting story? You're not going to talk about your nails anymore? Okay. So you know, I, I was in a, a coffee shop, and this is, I drank half a cup of coffee before I noticed there was lipstick on the cup. Yeah, isn't that gross? So I went to wipe it off, and there was watered up gum and lipstick on the napkin. And I must have been sitting in that woman's lap for like 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't want to give up my seat, you know what I'm saying? So, anyways, I'm going to leave you. I'd like to tell you a tender story before I go. I, I'm going to need to take a moment. Thank you. Anyway, when I was about nine years old, I accidentally caught my parents doing it. Um, yeah, I didn't see everything, you know, I couldn't because they made me drive. Thanks a lot. Good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. I've been dating someone. And actually, we've been talking about living together. But, you know, right now, I've got his shirts. I have his underwear. And I've stolen all of the CDs that I wanted from him. So I, I, I just don't know if he should live with me. Because right now, I have everything he has to offer. So I'm torn, as I would be. But I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm dating him for his, his pants and his underwear. I mean, I'm certainly liberated enough to go and buy men's underwear for myself, you know. I just don't like trying them on in the store. Because it seems like as soon as you get into the fitting room, somebody's right there saying, how you doing? How you doing in there? And in Manhattan, it's not necessarily somebody who works there. <laughs> how you doing in there? Um, I saw you go in there with a bathing suit. Uh -uh. Why don't you come out and get a better look at it? Uh -uh. In a three-way mirror or something. Uh -uh. Please, I'll give you a dollar. Uh -uh. So I, just, I, I think I'd like to live with someone that doesn't say, please, I'll give you a dollar. 